a big fan of, you know, um, cryotherapy, actually get being cold, you know, because that, that's, that's another way for you to put your body in a good stress. Right. So hormesis can be in many ways. If it doesn't create lasting damage to your body, you'll come out of the other side stronger. Okay? Yeah. So that you can do it with temperature as well. Now, there hasn't been perfect con uh, controlled experiments about whether this really will make you live longer, right? That's, that will take a long time. But I've done the research in my lab and I've looked at other scientists and there's a lot of evidence that cold shock and sauna provide health benefits. Um, and I love doing it anyway, so what's the harm? So the cold shock is, is either having a cold shower or dunking into a cold bath, sometimes with ice in it. Uh, I don't like that one as much. Um, I tend to just go into a cold pool at the gym, uh, which is about four degrees Celsius. It's enough to make you clench, but it, you get used to it. I do that only for, I go underwater, I dunk my head. I'm in there for maybe a minute or two. It's not, I'm not going to do an Iceman Hoff kind of thing and <laughs> sit in there for too long. I think that's enough. The sauna, actually, I really like, and there's a lot of good studies out of the Nordic countries Norway in particular and Finland have studies where they, they show that people who go to the sauna or in their houses have saunas uh, tend to live longer and they have much better cardiovascular health. Um, and so I think that's wonderful. You know, it's after a workout, I really like uh, just sweating it out. I feel great afterwards. After that ice bath, I come out feeling invigorated. Now, now just a, a word of caution. There is a study that says if you shock your body with cold, after an intense bodybuilding workout, it can reduce the benefits. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that means. Um, but because I, the, the weights and the cold bath are in the same facility, uh, it's not like I can just go home and come back another day. So I do it all on the same day. Um, yeah, but that's all I can say that I'm still doing it until it, I'm totally convinced that it's not worth doing. I know with your son, you know, a lot of you guys went to the gym, you went to sauna, steam room, jacuzzi, and then jump in a, in, in, in a, in a pool. And, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have all of that in the house. I have all of that in the house. So I'm already planning. Now, when it comes to getting the best benefits, do you think that it's best to, to go from a very hot, say, for example, a very hot location, sauna, jacuzzi, to a cold pool or they're just beneficial separately one day i can just do sauna one day i can do pool yeah nobody knows that um we know that the sirtuins are turned on by cold and we know that uh, there are benefits with heat nobody that i know of has done what you're asking which is test one to the other but theoretically it makes sense that the bigger the shock the better so that's what i do i go from sauna to steam room to cold then into a hot tub and I think that's most likely to give me the benefits because you, you want to get your body out of its state of complacency. Um, the modern world around us is built so that we don't feel any discomfort. The chairs are comfy. The lounges are comfy. We get in cars. Even our, our luggage has wheels now. <laughs> right? Can life get any easier? Seriously, we never have to go hungry usually. And so our bodies are like, yeah, times are good. We don't need to fight back. But over decades, you end up with a body that starts falling apart, getting diseases, and is shorter lived than if you trick the body into thinking the times were tough. Well